Welcome to getting started with the DevExpress WPF data grid. In this video, we'll first bind the grid control to an entity framework data source and quickly review the layout customization and data shaping options available in our grid control by default. In the second part, we'll make sure that all data has proper text formatting or lookup editors where needed. Once data display is all set, we'll provide a more in-depth review of data shaping and manipulation capabilities. You'll learn how to sort, group, filter, conditionally format data, and how to enable total and group summaries. The next part of the video will demonstrate how you can print or export the grid's current data display. Then we'll review the basics of the data grid's view technology and switch the display from traditional table to Outlook-inspired contact view. Finally, we'll take a look at the tree list view that allows you to visualize a self-reference data set. You'll also learn how to switch between different view types at runtime. Let's start with a new project in Visual Studio. Select DevExpress Template Gallery and click Next. Give the project a name and proceed. In the DevExpress Template Gallery, select WPF, then Ribbon Application. First, let's create a data source. Right-click the project and select Add Item. Search for Entity and select ADO.NET Entity Data Model. Let's change the name to Northwind Model. Next, go through the Data Connection Wizard to connect to a locally installed Northwind database. If you don't already have it installed, you can easily find it online. When prompted to select Database Objects, check the boxes next to Orders, Shippers, and Employees Tables. Click Finish to add the model to the project. Once the model has been generated, you can take a look at the northwindmodel.context file and see the Northwind Entities class, a DB context descendant. We'll use this class to create a view model. Right-click the project and select Add, New Item. In the list, select Class and name it View Model. In the new file, replace the using directives. For the view model class itself, let's use the template you now see pasted into the view. First, it defines a field of Northwind entities type. If the class constructor is invoked from design time, it creates a dummy order collection. This lets the controls retrieve the field list based on the entity type. Runtime constructor first initializes a new Northwind entities object. It then loads the actual object collection and assigns the list to view models orders property. That property is defined as the last item in the current template. As you can see, all the code in this view model deals with orders. Let's extend it to add shippers and employees too. First, add similar property declarations. Then add dummy collection initialization in the constructor's design time section. Finally, add code that loads actual object collections into the declared lists. Return to the main window. On the toolbox, under the DevExpress Data and Analysis category, find the grid control and drag it to the empty space under the ribbon. Right-click the control and select Layout, Reset All, so that the grid always occupies all available space. Use the window Smart Tag to set its data context. If you don't see the view model class in the list, rebuild the application. Return to the smart tag and set data context to view model. Click OK. In the grid control smart tag, set items source to orders. You can see that the grid control is now populated with columns. We'll run the application and see what the grid can do at this point. All column layout management you'd expect from a grid control is enabled. You can drag column headers to reorder columns. You can drag their right edges to resize them. If you right-click a header, you'll see a context menu. To quickly tighten up column data, select Best Fit All Columns. Now every column is resized depending on its content. If you drag a column away from the header panel, you'll notice a red X glyph. Drop the header anywhere here to hide the corresponding column from the view. To bring that column back to the view, 
right click a column header again and select Show Column Chooser. You'll find the column you just removed. Its checkbox is unchecked. You can use the checkbox to toggle column visibility, and you can also drag the column to the required position on the column header panel. Let's use the checkboxes to remove a few more columns from the view. Invoke the column header menu again and now select Sort Ascending. You'll see that order date values are now sorted. You can also click the header sort values or reverse the sort order. Since the column now displays a sort glyph, the caption no longer fits. You can double click the column's right edge to resize the column to its best fit width. Now click the filter glyph. In the drop down, you'll see two tabs. The first contains a list of comparison operators such as equals, greater than, or between. On the second tab, all available values are broken down into a hierarchy of years, months, and days. You can select the ranges that you want to display within the grid. Once a filter condition is applied, you'll see it displayed in the panel at the bottom of the control. On the right-hand side, click the Edit Filter button to invoke the Filter Editor. In this window, you can build a complex filter expression by adding individual conditions or nested groups. We'll come back to this dialog later in this video. There's one more UI element that helps you locate and filter grid data. This is the search panel displayed in the top right corner. Type in a few characters to see all records that have a match. Let's move on to data grouping. Drag a header to the group panel to see all data broken down into categories based on this column's values. You'll notice that the ship via column values are just numbers and we'll need to link them to shipper names later in this video. You can expand and collapse individual group rows. When you scroll the grid, note how the group rows stay pinned at the top until you reach the next data group. Before we wrap up this initial overview of the grid's runtime capabilities, let's look at yet another data analysis feature, Total Summary Computation. Right-click a column and select the summary type you want to display. Note how the summary is automatically updated when you change the applied filter or search expression. Let's enable another total summary for the freight cost column. Note how both column and summary values are not formatted as currency. In our next step, we'll fix that, and we'll also make the grid look up shipping company names so that all available data is displayed in a user-friendly format. If you select the grid control at design time and look at XAML, you'll see that only a couple of lines of code were generated. There's a grid control tag and the nested view definition. Nothing allows you to access settings for individual columns. The two attributes will hint at the reason why. Auto-generate columns and enable smart column generation. These options mean that the grid automatically populates the column collection when you start the app. Open the Control Smart tag and select Generate Columns. You can remove options we just mentioned because now explicit column definitions have been added to XAML. As you navigate through XAML, you can see how the corresponding column headers are highlighted. The reverse action works too. You can click a column header to navigate to the corresponding XAML code line. Column Smart tags also become available. Let's select the freight column that needs its values to be formatted as currency. Click the Smart tag and initialize the Edit Settings property with a Text Edit Settings object. See how the declaration is automatically added to XAML too. Let's edit Mask Settings. In the dialog, select Numeric Mask Type, then Currency from the predefined Masks list. These settings will control value input but you also need to adjust display text format. I'll add the display format attribute and set it to the same value as the applied mask. Note that such value symmetry will work for only a few types of date, time, and numeric masks. As planned, our next step is to look up ship via values in a separate data table. Select the column and use its smart tag to set edit settings to look up edit settings. Set the item's source to shippers. Assign company name to the display member option and shipper ID to value member. Review the XAML code automatically generated for the column. 
let's use XAML view to remove a few columns that we won't need anymore. And once that's done and only a few columns remain, you can set the view's auto width option to true. This option makes the columns occupy the entire control's width so that the horizontal scroll bar is no longer required. And let's run the application. All columns have the same width initially. You can once again use the best fit option to change column width according to their content. You'll notice that the total width of all columns still matches the grid and the scroll bar doesn't appear. Let's review the changes we applied to columns. Freight cost values are now formatted as currency even when an in-place editor is active. The mask will not allow users to enter anything but currency values. If you enable a total summary for the freight column, the display format is still in effect. Ship via now displays shipping company names instead of IDs. If you edit a cell, the editor displays a pop-up grid control with the list of all available companies. If you group by this column now, group rows will display user-friendly names as well. Now that we've fixed all data display issues, let's go back to the filter editor dialog. First, let's filter order dates using the filter pop-up. Click the edit filter button and add a new group to the criteria. Let's change the logical operator for this group to OR. One condition will filter by ship via. Notice how the same lookup editor is used in the filter editor. Another condition will filter data by country. Let's use a condition that requires multiple values. In the end, we created two conditions joined by OR. This combined criterion is joined by and with another expression. When you close the editor, you can review the resulting filter string in the footer. Now that we've properly set up column editors, we can make use of edit form functionality. Add the edit form show mode attribute to the view and review the list of available options. Select inline and run the application. To edit data, you now need to double click a row or press enter. Once you do so, an area with automatically arranged editors appears under the row. The same editor controls are available for the same fields. You can also see that the order date column has an automatically assigned drop-down calendar. In the next section, we'll focus on data shaping and analysis features again, and we'll demonstrate how to use the grid's print and export capabilities to create reports. Let's start with totals and group summaries. In XAML, locate the grid control tag and add markup for a total summary. In this example, we specify order ID as the data field and count as the summary type. You'll see that the grid control displays the create summary item in the footer. In a similar fashion, add markup for group summaries. To display the number of rows in each group, you can copy the same item definition with the count function. Run the application. You'll see totals displayed under the order ID column. Now let's group data by country. Every group row displays a summary on the right-hand side. You can also drag the city field to the group panel to add another hierarchy level. Group rows on that second level will also display summaries so you can instantly see how many orders correspond to each country or city. During this next step, we'll add a button that displays the grid's print preview dialog. First, let's add a button. Since the application already has a ribbon control, you can navigate to its code and then duplicate one of the ribbon page groups. Remove unnecessary code to leave a single button and adjust its name and caption. Use the button smart tag to access the DevExpress image collection and find a print icon. Before we can write the button click code, we need to set a name for the grid control. Navigate to the grid's declaration in XAML and set the name attribute to my grid control. Return to the ribbon button and create a click handler. In code, use the grid's view property and then call the show print preview method. Note that since we use the view property instead of accessing the view object directly, the same code will work later if we switch the view to a different type. Before we run the application and try the print and export capabilities, let's add a couple of options to the view. 
One, make sure that group rows collapsed in the control will also be printed and exported in their collapsed state. The second option enables the Excel style conditional formatting UI. Let's run the application and review all this functionality. Group data by any column. Right-click the Group panel and select Full Expand. Collapse a few group rows, then click the Print Preview button. You'll see that Row Expanded State is preserved. This means you can easily create printed reports with exactly the data you want to display. And having group summaries and totals displayed allows you to provide information about underlying data even when not all rows are displayed. Not only can you print this report, but you can also use multiple data export options, the most popular of which is probably Export to Excel, where users can continue to edit and analyze data if necessary. Close the Print Preview window for now. Let's see the conditional formatting feature in action. Before the last application start, we enabled the option that makes the conditional formatting UI available via the column header context menu. We'll apply a color scale formatting to the freight cost column. You'll see that there's not much difference in colors right now. To make the effect more noticeable, let's filter values to limit them within a closer range. Let's apply another rule to the order date column. This time we'll set up a between condition. Enter the dates that specify the desired range, Either type them in or use the automatically displayed date picker. Then you can select one of the predefined formats. Let's use simple bold formatting this time. We'll apply this style to entire rows, not only cells within the order date column. Anytime you want to adjust or remove any of the applied rules, you can use the context menu to invoke the rule manager dialog. Let's run the Print Preview dialog again. You'll see that the conditional formatting is now applied to the printed report as well. If we export data to Excel right now, you will also see the grid's layout replicated with the same data groups, totals, and formatting. In the next step, you'll learn how to switch the grid's display from the current table view layout to the card layout inspired by Outlook's Contacts module. Before we make the change, Let's apply a couple more changes to the grid control. These changes will help us see the differences between grid control settings and its view. First, locate the grid control declaration in XAML and specify the filter string attribute. The specified string will filter out orders with shipping addresses in Brazil. The design view immediately reflects the change. Now locate the order date column definition. Use the group index parameter to group data against this column. Let's also apply the group interval attribute, which allows you to group data by commonly used ranges instead of individual values. In this case, we'll use monthly breakdown. Once again, the design view reflects the changes and you'll now see the column header in the group by box. Let's run the app and use live data to review all changes applied to the grid. Rows are grouped by month intervals. The filter condition is already applied and you can use the checkbox to temporarily disable it and see how the total summary value changes as the result. If you invoke the filter pop-up in the ship country column, you'll also see that Brazil is checked off in the list. Totals and group summaries are also applied. Finally, let's make note that we also changed column settings. Lookup editor is used for the ship via column and currency formatting and mask are applied to freight cost. I'll close the application. The time has come to switch the view to card layout. All you need to do is replace the table view definition in XAML. A few incompatible settings will be underlined, those related to auto width, conditional formatting, and built-in edit form. Let's remove them and review changes in the design view first. The order date column header sits in the group panel. The filter panel displays the same condition. The column list remains unchanged. Let's run the application and review those changes with live data. Each data record is now displayed in a business card format, yet many data manipulation capabilities work the same way as they did in table view. You can collapse and expand group rows. You'll see the total summary now displayed in the top right corner. If you click the glyph above it, you'll see a column header list. 
Use these headers as you did in the table view. Filter dropdowns are still available. So are context menus. You can also drag headers to change field position in cards or to hide certain fields. The search panel is available and offers the same capabilities. If you try to edit data, you'll discover that column settings are also preserved. Now let's expand the second group and see what happens if we run the print preview dialog. It's the same thing as with table view. The printed page displays your totals and preserves group row expanded state and shows group summary numbers too. When needed, group row information is repeated at the top of the page. To better understand the separation between grid control settings and view settings, let's review the entire XAML code we generated until this point. The attributes in the control tag are items, source, and filter strings. Nested elements also specify totals and group summaries. Column definitions follow. Some specify settings related to data shaping, such as grouping or sorting. Some specify editor settings. Finally, the view declaration is very short and only contains a couple of attributes. As you've now seen, most of the settings we used were applied to the grid control and they persisted when we switched the view type. Speaking of views, there's one more type available, tree list view. We'll now demonstrate it in another grid control. First, let's add a tab control markup to the main window and cut and paste the existing grid control into the first tab. Navigate to the second tab and drag a grid control to it from the toolbox. Use the control's smart tag to set items source to employees. Let's generate columns and then clean up the list. Move the Report to column closer to the beginning. We'll need to see its values to understand how the grid builds the tree hierarchy. Let's run the application and take a look at the data. The Employee ID column lists unique key values for each employee. The Reports to column has values that refer to those IDs. This way you can link an employee to their direct superior. Now let's return to Design View and set up a tree list view. For basic setup, you only need to specify the two fields as we discussed. One specifying key values and another holding parent row references. If you run the application, you see only the root row with key value two. Expand it to see the next level of rows. All of them will have two in the reports to column. There's also a third level that lists people who refer to employee number five. In the final section of this walkthrough, let's add ribbon commands that will allow end users to switch between different view types. First, let's move the tree list view definition to the resources section. Copy the tag as is and add the key attribute. In the grid control tag, add the view attribute. Use the recently created static resource to specify the attributes value. Now add two additional view definitions to the resources section. You don't need to specify any additional attributes. The key will be enough to make the example work. Let's add a button to the ribbon control. Set its tag attribute so that it matches the resource key you assign to the tree list view. Add an item click handler, Initialize two more buttons for table and card view. Make sure that their tag values refer to appropriate resource keys. Before you can write handler code, assign a name to the grid control. Return to the buttons and navigate to item click code. First, you'll need to obtain the clicked item's tag value and convert it to a string. Since these tags match resource keys, you can then obtain the view object from the resource collection. Note that the code casts the object to grid data view base, which is the common ancestor for all grid views. 
and let's run the application. The grid control uses the tree list view initially. You can press the card, table, and tree list buttons to switch between different types at runtime. Before we wrap up this video, let's take one final look at code. As you can see, the fact that all views have a common ancestor came in handy a couple of times. We obtained a resource and without knowing the object's type, assigned it to the view property. In the print preview example, we called the base classes show print preview method and the code line continued to work after we switched views too. And that's it for this video. To learn more about the DevExpress WPF data grid, refer to our online documentation. As always, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you have questions, please comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more great DevExpress videos. Thanks for watching, and thank you for choosing DevExpress.